time to get sexy. So watch Secular Sexuality Live Thursdays at 7 p.m. Central. Visit tiny.cc slash YTSS and call into the show at 512-991-9242 or connect to the show online at tiny.cc slash call S-E-X. Oh boy, oh boy, it's another week of the nonprofits. Hello, YouTube land. Hello, listeners through our podcast. Welcome back for another episode of the nonprofits. We are a 501c3 nonprofit organization dedicated to the separation of religion and church and state. And uh, well, we're here. <laughs> this is exciting. I have a great panel for y'all. Great panel. Uh, I will start off to my far this direction because i can't tell size right now richard gilliver you are back with us how are you yeah. my good sir um i'm okay i'm very tired because it's like <laughs> two o'clock at this recording time and well uh, yeah i'm excited i love this show i love being on it I love good it. we allowed for a nap so i hope you took privy <laughs> to that we allowed for the nap you should be refreshed <laughs> okay <laughs> no worries there and of course my lovely lovely dearest friend cynthia mcdonald darling so good to see you how hello, are you hello i'm doing well new and i have taken a nap before we actually recorded so there oh. you go well by george very good very i don't know why we're doing the accent i don't I'm, either I it's apologize. richard it, richard it's, made it happen it's, it's richard it mm -hmm. made it happen yes sure <laughs> but <laughs> last but not very least, recently just seen on Truth Wanted, Secular Rarity. Hello, hello. Glad we could scoop you up. Sorry we weren't the first, but glad you're here. How are you? I am super, super excited. I get to be talking with Jenna, Cynthia, and Richard. I did not get a nap before the show, though, so I'll have to write that into the contract. You, so. well, yes, you will. I have to write that in my contract. I never get a nap before these things. It, it just doesn't happen for me. Privilege of the West Coast. Anyways, I'm not complaining. <laughs> but um, glad I can be with you all here this afternoon. Glad we have our viewers here and our listeners. Uh, so um, before further ado, let's just go through a few things. If, of course, by all means, just typical of the show, links of the Show topics, links to the article, everything that we'll be discussing this afternoon are down below in the description. So please, by all means, pause the video, take your time to review the information. Don't trust what we have to say. Take a view for the information yourself, follow along and jump back in whenever you're ready, all right? So now that we are refreshed, now that we are introduced, let's get started. This is actually something we need to dust off on our shelves. We actually have a little viewer mail that we want to go over with you. So we'll jump into that. Here is our viewer mail. Viewer mail. Now, um, not much of a description within this viewer mail. This comes from Thursday 721. And I double checked that is their government name. So they were so kind to send us a brief message in regards to something very interesting happening in the country of Zambia. Uh, Miss Cynthia, please, by all means, introduce us to this wonderful news. Oh boy, oh B-O-Y, will I be <laughs> wonderfully happy to introduce you to this news. Mm. Okay, <clears throat> so this particular story comes from the, um, I believe that's the uh, Marabi Post. And the article is entitled, Zambian priest James Sakala, who was buried alive, promised church members to resurrect like Jesus Christ, but died mysteriously. And, and I just like to uh, give a spoiler alert. He didn't die mysteriously. And oh. I'm gonna, yeah, no, it wasn't mysterious at all. But you know, I, I'll I'll read a little bit from the article so that you can get a little, you know, a little something something in you guys' head. So, okay, 
So James Sakala, a 22-year-old overconfident priest, that's his first problem, he was way too young, dressed in pure white gown, a parallel like the, dis the disciplines of Jesus Christ, with only brown leather slippers on his feet, summoned his miracle-seeking congregants to witness the second resurrection to ever happen after that of Jesus. This was around the grave he dug in a strange voice as someone possessed by the Holy Spirit declared and commanded his followers, all ye of little faith, bury this Sakala, and you see now, and he shall rise from the dead and breathe his free lungs again. Out of the reverence for the priest, they were initially reluctant but obeyed, by aiding their priest in his quest, Sakala of the Zion Church, also the part-time witch doctor, wanted to perform the mother of all miracles, resurrecting from the dead in Tidiza, a town in Zambia. And I'm going to mm. skip a further down, skip a further down, if I can, if I may. So basically they buried him and they were going to wait. And his followers did what he said to do. And then the article then says, the faithful followers and congregation had no option than to scout for shovels, allowed him to lay flat in his ditch and with him and dance, shovel upon another covered him in, in another covered him in soil. As the priest lay below the pile of soil, the choir sang their melodious music and danced in expectation of a manifestation of the divine deliverance from God. Can anyone guess what happened after that? He rose. He rose, right? <sighs> Did I spoil it? Do you live? He lied? Well, all spiritual exercises and efforts made to resurrect him proved futile oh, as the disturbed followers dug up the grave and to their surprise or surprise, with his white gown soiled in mucus, blood, and he seemed to have struggled badly. Yes, <sighs> James Sakala, Zambian priest and part-time witch doctor, mm. taught. Well, and I mean, obviously, <laughs> this, it's, it's funny and it's not because obviously a person lost their life performing an act that um, has no empirical evidence of ever really, um, you know, being doable. So that the is Bible. unfortunate. Oh, oh yeah, the Bible, I'm sorry. Yes, the Bible. <laughs> Richard, what does the Bible say? I know you have oh. great knowledge of the Bible. Please tell us what <laughs> well, went wrong. I know is that the, the article told us, the article told us quite sincerely that uh, this would, that the, according to the Bible, it was wasn't all. It was only Jesus who'd ever risen from the dead, and this just is not the case. That's true. I was looking. I had a quick look through the Bible as uh, as I was looking at this article, and I found at least the cases of people rising from the dead other than Jesus. So it's it's from the start. It's fraught with like inconsistencies and silliness from uh, from the biblical perspective but my favorite part of the whole thing which Cynthia touched on was when he told his followers in a strange voice oh ye of little faith now I don't know about you guys but when I read that I got this kind of deep biblical authoritative voice going off oh ye of little faith but I'm not sure it was entirely like that mm. I think he might have said oh ye of little faith I think that's why it might have been. I, I think this article misrepresents what actually happened. I mean, that's fair. I, I can hear that. I can hear that, that. Well, I mean, to the article's point, they did say in a strange uh, voice, uh, seemed possessed with the Holy Spirit, you know. So the and, Holy Spirit's not from Yorkshire and very high pitched. Is that yeah. what you're telling me, Cynthia? You know, I mean, I'm just saying, Richard, I, I when I have witnessed uh people who claim to be possessed with the Holy Spirit in my in my Christian days and 
and and they said things but they didn't sound like they were from yorkshire but you know <laughs> <laughs> well <She's> I, certain. <laughs> I think one of my biggest problems with the article and i i know this is super nitpicky hmm. but he claimed that the reason he was doing this was because that whole jesus speech thing at the last supper where jesus says do this in remembrance of me yeah. that what jesus actually meant was resurrect from the dead like i did <laughs> not the bread not the wine and i i i'm gonna have to defend some christians here y'all i i just i don't think that's what it means mm. i don't i don't think that's what it's referencing I, I could be wrong on that it's been a while since i went to church but i mean that that was my understanding it was the break the bread drink the wine don't try and resurrect so i well but, a lot of practices in, <laughs> in the church in in several different dominations mm -hmm. uh oftentimes uh did that you know they they broke their wafers mm -hmm. they drank their grape juice depending mm -hmm. on like if you're southern baptist like if you like in the catholic church or main like protestant that was real wine my mama's church was manischewitz but that's neither here nor there which is delicious chilled by the way but anyway that in actuality was the what we oftentimes interpreted the do this in remembrance of me was actually having uh, a symbolic a demonstration of the Last Supper. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily, at, at least for all the times that I went to church, I've never seen a priest because, you know, when I was in Catholic church or, uh, or a, a vicar when I was in the Anglican uh, Episcopal church or a pastor uh, when I was in uh, the charismatic, you know, evangelical type you dig, none of them ever dug a grave outside of the church and 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 told people oh ye a little face bury me and watch me come back right. from the dead. no I wonder why mm. uh, yeah exactly <laughs> because just like cynthia said it's supposed to be symbolic you're not supposed to imitate this stuff right you know obviously but yeah. <laughs> even with it being symbolic I'm, I'm 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 gonna call him Zambian Zambian uh, Jesus because that's just how I termed him so <laughs> Zambian Jesus did it wrong first of all he wasn't on the cross prior to this. He wasn't already dead prior to this. Mm -hmm. He was buried underground, which per the Bible, and Richard, you can help me and correct me if I'm wrong, because you have absolute knowledge of the Bible. <laughs> Jesus was laid to rest in a mountain and a wall, whatever, and the stone rolled over and he laid there for three days and then, you know, rose up again. None of that happened. And yes, there is some conflictive information within the article because another supportive article attached to this mentioned they uh, the they weren't sure if he was actually buried there under th if 30 minutes or if it was actually three days. Unsure if the events even happened, who the followers were. I'm like, who was the Judas? Show me who the Judas was. That's that was my important question. But still, symbolic, yes. Imitative, no. To be fair, the, the Bible, uh, the Bible uh, accounts, all of the four gospel accounts are completely different to each other anyway. So mm. could this being conflictive accounts is following the Bible quite closely. Mm. The, the thing about the article is that it said he'd actually done this before. Which, which You're right. <laughs> yeah, it, You're right. there was, there was, was nothing really there. Mm. there. There was nothing there that... that in any way shape or form gave evidence to that at all i mean you know not that not that just a simple video of a guy brushing some dirt off of himself and standing up again would would do it um, like, yeah 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 it's like that's i'm a here <laughs> and i mean on uh, you know like like you said at the beginning it we we don't have a reliable method when it comes to knowing whether or not we're interpreting these things correctly. And this is the harm that can come from that is a guy who rightly described in the article, as Cynthia said, overconfidently said, hey, bury me alive and I'll rise again, which mm -hmm. I, it, it's it's very confusing as to why he got that in his head. But it's it, he read the Bible and and that's what did it. So <laughs> he read the Bible and got a really bad idea. Yeah, yeah, wouldn't be the first time. 
right? <laughs> right. But what about, you know, okay, obviously, uh, when looking at this, uh, just in plain sight, without the whole religious aspect, basically, a, a few of his followers, people buried a, a live man in dirt, thought something was wrong, dug him up again. Oh, my gosh, he's dead. And now the report says that there are, you know, uh, police are looking out for those followers that happen to do this. Now, because they were followers of, you know, Z um, Zambian Jesus, are they really at fault for just following what their leader told them to do because based on biblical reason? Should well, they I be mean, prosecuted? Should they be in trouble for this? Well, maybe they could use that as some type of defense once they actually get caught and go into court and maybe be charged. Mm. I don't know. Like, I was just following orders, you know. Mm. Uh, oftentimes, like, but, but, uh, I, as, as I have watched a, a copious in a, a amount of Star Trek, following orders does not always mean that that's something that you're really supposed to do mm. if mm -hmm. the orders that you are given are bad orders and I, I don't know where anybody's like um i uh you know thinking was when they were witnessing this event about you know why it was a good idea <clears throat> excuse me in order for them to bury this man and and even though that he you know cocked up this strange holy spirit you know seemingly uh voice and said do it because you uh to show your faith I, I mean, like, I, I would, I hope that somebody, I, and I, and I, and I know that the article doesn't really, like, you know, mention this, is that somebody actually would have said something to the, you know, adverse. But then again, maybe they would have got, you know, as you said before, Jenna, uh, you know, trotted down for being a Judas if they mm -hmm. talked against mm -hmm. it. I still want to know who that Judas is. Me too. I think <laughs> there are two aspects to to the uh, to the are they at blame as well? Because if if the report is correct and he did try it before. And he had a small group of people around him who were helping him. Maybe this is a well-practiced magician's trick that he has done several times before. Mm. Maybe this is the one that went wrong and this is why it's attracted so much attention. But maybe it was something he did regularly. If that's the case, same people helping him, then they are, of course, accountable. If it's something he's kind of come out and it's the first time he's done it and he's putting it out there, and they're so indoctrinated to believe it's going to happen, then I think it's a different story as to whether they should get as much blame. Yeah, I think there's probably a, a good argument to be made that maybe it's not, we, we throw the book at them, but maybe not as hard as we would if they purposefully buried this guy alive as opposed to accidentally. But still, a, a guy died because yeah. because a group of people let him lay down in in a ditch and they shoveled dirt on him until he was covered. And then, like Jenna said, we, we don't know if it was 30 minutes or if it was like three full days. But uh, uh, Jenna, Cynthia, I think you guys are medically trained. How long can a human being go without oxygen again? It's less than that, right? Much less. Yeah. Oh, um, you know, with the description of him being bloodied and mucus mm -hmm. and just yeah he you know suffered yeah truly yeah. suffered like the weight of dirt just compiling on you that can get heavy and strain the body obviously right. so the poor guy suffered he, uh, i mean their sins suffered for the <laughs> sins of the people that was there you know bad like joke. the compression on the lungs i mean like it is a bad <laughs> joke but still i mean like i mean but even going back to you know the whole point about um the people who were there who either they have witnessed this previously and he's done it several times as some type of magician's trick or this is the first time that they witnessed it and they just did it because he's told them to do there's still indoctrination that's playing here you know whether if it's something that's been witnessed a couple of times or has not been witnessed before and they were really hoping for a miracle this to me is more so the dangerous side of what religion can do um, and for the simple fact of the matter is, is that you are, you know, putting, you know, false hopes into people's brains in saying that these particular things are going to happen because my God said that they will and I'm his vessel on earth. So do as do this in remembrance of me, you know, no pun intended, and then watch what happens. Right. I was even thinking of the um, and I'm pretty sure 
it, this may have been in the back of his mind uh, when uh, Jesus said, uh, I forgot specifically, it's in my notes, people, mm -hmm. uh, do this, not do this in remembrance of me, but greater works ye shall do. You know, after he resurrected from the dead and he was actually um, addressing the apostles. Uh, and, and so people oftentimes would uh, state that if I am a follower of Christ, then um, his power also rests within me because of faith. Mm -hmm. Remember, faith the size of a mustard seed, you can speak to the mountain and say, cast ye into, be re removed and cast into the sea, you know, and it would obey you. You know, so this is the same type of, you know, ideology that's being espoused here, that if I believe hard enough through my faith that this is what's going to happen because I serve a powerful and almighty God. And mm. unfortunately, uh, that's exactly what did not happen. Yeah. And my response to that is James 2.14, faith without works is dead, literally. And I think of this as two ways. I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> terrible joke. <laughs> I, <mean, laughs> I think of it as two ways. One on the faith basis, just stemming off what you just said, Cynthia. Perhaps, and we can decipher this because we all of us have been questioned at one point or another if, you know, since we were past believers, our faith was not strong enough. Our belief in God was not strong enough. Therefore, that's why you, that's why we're blasphemers now, right? So, could it be the case that in the case of these followers, their faith was not strong enough to mm -hmm. prevent this man from dying? But in reflection that in a previous point that you said, when you said following orders, we know of history that uh, have that men have said they were just following orders. Hitler's men that said that were just following orders when genocide happened against the Jewish people. So to think on that and to think on the life that was lost in this situation, prosecution for this, for just following orders should not surmount the same way. It shouldn't just because, and, and yes, I can kind of, I can definitely agree with the um, hindrance, well, with the application of indoctrination, the, um, you know, being so malleable to just going forth with those orders and doing as your leader said, because they're so charismatic and inspirational and you're a part of that group. Sure. By all means, I'll go ahead and do it. Mm -hmm. But there are consequences, obviously. So I don't think that shouldn't be let go so easily. I don't know. My mind can be changed, but a man's life was lost. That, that's a, a, all joking aside. That is the ultimate consequence of this. No, truly, truly. Um, I mean, hopefully, uh, I don't know how long it has been since Zambi and Jesus died, but maybe he will rise again. We do not know. We will keep you posted if we get some news, folks. Um, <laughs> but any, I'm, I'm going to stop with the jokes. It is serious, but any final words on this, um, before we move forward? Cause I know, uh, and then again, uh, uh, another shout out to Thursday, seven, two, one. Again, I'm sure that's your government name. Thank you for sending us an email, suggesting us to look into this report. It is fascinating to say the least, cause that, that's something I would not have discovered for myself. And it's good to hear, you know, um, the good news. Uh, you know, that's not necessarily in America. So thank you for that, even though that wasn't really good news, but you know what I mean. Um, but any final thoughts on this <laughs> from either of you? Yeah, don't don't bury yourself and try and be Jesus. That's, I think that's... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah pretty, that's a good point. It's yeah, pretty I, simple, pretty easy. Just yeah. don't bury yourself. Yeah, yeah. I, I agree with Richard and Secular Verity. Yeah, I, I, oh. don't bury yourself. Try to be Jesus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't don't try to be Jesus, please. That is, that is very good advice. Thank you, all three of you, for saying such things. But, um, of course, by all means, um, like Thursday721, government name, thank you for sending that email. And please, if you all have references of news that we want to, you want us to discuss, by all means, we will love to have your input. Uh, love to have um, your advice or any other topics that you would like for us to review on that is happening across the world, let us know. But because of such dedication for our viewers and spreading the good news of the faithless nonprofits, we are over 9,000 subscribers. 
what? Whoa. We have not been proven liars yet and we keep climbing. So thank you, all of you veteran subscribers and welcome to those new subscribers. Happy to have you. This is just a tidbit of that extra 1K milestone to get to two, 10 grand because you know why? We get to fundraise and that'd be good. Raising money for the faithless, raising money for the atheist community because it's needed. So if you are watching us now, and if you haven't subscribed yet, you can help us there by doing so right now. Click that red subscribe button, be alerted, be alerted, alerted and alerted. Alerted is not a word, but alerted <laughs> by clicking the notification bell. And so that you are alerted each week, every Sunday, this time, 3 p.m. Central, when we premiere a new episode. So please, by all means, subscribe and view us. And um, if you are not aware, the Atheist Community of Austin has another YouTube channel. Check out the Atheist Experience Network, a one-stop shop for ACA shows and podcast form in one channel. So go ahead and subscribe over there to tiny.cc slash A-N-E podcasts to listen to episodes of the nonprofits, Secular Sexuality, the Atheist Experience, Truth Wanted as Secular Rarity was on last week, and the rest of our other ACA shows. And so you don't miss a single episode of what we have to offer for you. That being said, let's just go ahead and dive on into our next topic here. So this is a bit more serious. And I, I promise I'm a no, jo no jokes um, needed for this because there is, of course, growing news out of um, the lovely state of Texas, uh, apart from, you know, the voter discrimination rights and apart from everything else that we love to hear what Texas is doing. Recently, there was a bill uh, passed by lawmakers of the Senate Health and Human Services Committee uh, in which prohibiting biological males from competing or, well, I, I'll say this, let's, let's rewind. The bill states that it's prohibiting biological males or which um, a person is identified as male on their birth certificate from competing in women's sports during um, this kind of happened during a day two special session in the state Senate. And so the law is suggesting uh, now, and they lovely, lovely lovingly um, passed this bill right before the fall season of the new school year this year. Uh, so that's just great. This bill is enforcing uh, a, a federation or a committee uh, for universities, um, intergalactic schools, and public schools to change their rules to suggest that if a person is not of, if a person is described on the birth certificate as biologically male, they cannot participate in female sports, i.e. this is basically stemming against going against transgender athletes. So they're keeping them in limbo and just, you know, further discrimination as far as um, doing this against our lovely uh, transgender uh, persons. So unfortunately, of course, that bill has passed and those changes have been made to um, public lower high schools and uh, upper university schools. <sighs> so what do we think? Yeah. Well, uh, okay. Go ahead, uh, Elliot. Yeah, go ahead. Well, it's uh, one of the things I said in my notes on this was this is yet again a, a group of individuals that are firmly planting their flag in in outright bigotry and mm -hmm. a little bit. Well, not a little bit, a lot of bit unnecessarily. The, the mm -hmm. vast majority of any problems that may exist between uh, transgender athletes and cisgender athletes, the vast majority of those organizations have taken care of this stuff years ago. I mean, the Olympics had this discussion 20 some odd years ago. We, we have had transgender athletes involved in tennis, soccer, uh, rowing, ping pong, I, bowling, name, name a sport. And there is somebody that is a part of the transgender community that, that is, is there. And it, it seems to me like they're just really going out of their way to be assholes, you know? Like, why do we care so much about fourth graders playing soccer? Like, I like soccer, but holy crap, people, 
it just seems it just seems unnecessary to to go through this. I, I mean, one of the things that came through in the article, and I think there was even a, a quick little video of um, a cisgendered woman that's speaking. She she was involved in high school. I don't even, I don't even think she's in high school anymore. Yeah, um, so I don't think this will apply to her anymore. But she made the comment that you know I've heard so many times that's like. Oh, it's it's so disheartening to just see uh, so many, you know, my hard work and my colleagues hard work and we work so hard. And then for that just to be stripped away from me by this transgender woman, which it's important to note that they are focusing on transgender women, I, I mm -hmm. guess, maybe. Right. Maybe non-binary people aren't a problem. Maybe like trans men aren't a problem. I, I I don't I don't know. But that's the problem with this bill now. And and one of the things that I said in my notes is that like when it when it comes to this particular issue, I'm a little mixed about it. Only because um, and the reason being, especially when you're talking about transgender women versus cisgender women, you know there are some biological differences that might give transgender women some um, more uh, advantage. Or, you know, over cisgender women, depending on the sport that they're uh, operating in. And it could also be uh, another issue of when, let's just say that when the transgender person actually started, you know, going, if they started doing treatment. So if they started doing like hormone therapy, that can definitely uh, have effects on your physiology. Um, also, even if like, say, for instance, if they identified as, you know, either trans as a, a young person and they did puberty blockers, that can also have like a huge um, impact on their development as, you know, as a person, uh, depending on what they were born as, you know, biologically. So, but, but just to do this whole blanketed, you know, if you were identified as a biological male, you can't do this without any type of um, uh, conversations about, you know, how individuals are, you know, have developed in order for them to actually become an athlete in, in, in said sport. And, and, and I don't particularly care for any bills that happen to pass with these blanketed responses to, mm -hmm. you know, and, you know, and very much so overarching um, um, points in order to actually curtail people from being able to participate in sports. And, and the thing about also to even though like, I'm not a very big sports person, I mean, look at me, but, <laughs> but you know, it's, it's, it's very, I mean, for people who actually like participate in sports, and you know, especially with their young people, and you take that away, you, you, you know, and it, it, that's just to me, that's just very cruel. Yeah, I agree. That certainly is cool. And um, to the point, uh, as far as what uh, you were saying, Seckler, uh, this bill was authored by a state senator named Charles Perry uh, back in March of this year. And he did state, and I'm reading a quote here from the uh, article uh, on presenting this bill to the floor, quoting, if those kids got to high school, it would have been a tragedy to have all of those summers away and competitive athlete athletics that they have participated in to be able to be wiped out by someone other than their biological sex, being able to come in and take that from them. Same language, same idiotic, stupid bullshit language. Like, come on. And, and then, and, to, yeah, go ahead. No, no, I was just saying, and then, and that is definitely a person saying that that has no idea how these particular issues work. Exactly. You exactly. know, I, yeah, that, that, and that, that's the whole, and even like, you know, to my, you know, my aforementioned point about, you know, when it comes to like how uh, kids develop, you know, when they identify as trans, um, most of these people, I, I would say like the majority of these particular lawmakers that are writing bills uh, against transgender people are are ones who are not educated on transgender people, mm -hmm. and and they are not educated on you know uh, me medical. I mean, like I I was even listening to a, a podcast uh, a while ago um, from this uh, doctor who uh, started a um, a practice uh, for transgender people to do telehealth who may mm. not necessarily have access to medical um, uh, uh, treatments in their state. 
And um, so, but some of the Southern states that she was operating in changed laws in order to block people from being able to get, you know, medical treatment when it came of to, course. you know, hormone sure. therapy, puberty blockers, et cetera. And mm -hmm. so, and she was licensed in, um, in Alabama, and I'm sorry, in uh, Georgia. But when they changed the laws, they uh, prohibited, you know, her from being able to work with the patients in their particular states uh, if, if, if they don't have access to any other doctors there. So if people needed to come to get treated, to get seen, to even get medication, they will have to drive all the way from their corresponding states to Georgia, where she is, in order for them to get treated. And, and this is, and this is my problem with all of this is that, you know, they're, they're oftentimes curtailing folks from being able to, you know, just be able to actually medically identify for who they already see themselves already. And, and it's yeah. not, it's not fair. It, it, it totally is yeah. not fair. And, and even to your point earlier, yes, this is, this is downright uh, ignorant, biased, practiced bigotry point yep. blank period richard i want to bring you into the fold what say you yeah uh, i've got a couple of points on it first of all i want to briefly touch upon uh the the person that cynthia and elliot mentioned who the student who testified uh mm -hmm. that she was mm -hmm. a, an athlete called uh casa de corner and she told the committee from the perspective of a female athlete now just listen to this language this is so emotionally charged it is absolutely heartbreaking to think of all my years of hard work could be for nothing because a man could say he identifies as a woman and without even undergoing surgery, take my spot and my scholarship. I'm not entirely sure, and this may be my project, my prejudice kicking through here, but I'm not entirely sure that even that had the person gone through surgery, that uh, Cassidy Corner's... Uh, Coma's uh, opinion would have been any different. That mm -hmm. language was so emotionally charged and mm -hmm. so uh, contrary uh, that I'm not entirely sure that had, had the athlete even gone through surgery, she wouldn't be thinking any different. For someone to take her spot and her scholarship, mm -hmm. even if they'd gone through surgery, I think she'd still be as uh, heartbroken as the article says. But it, mm -hmm. And in general, as well, I think the, the, there was another case of a, a transgender, and this was a transgender male, who um, who yeah. had been abused, uh, had been abused, and he'd had to move a same-sex couple, if I remember rightly, same-sex. Charlie couple. Apple, yeah, that's the one. Mm -hmm. uh, a same-sex couple had been attacked, and one of them had been murdered, so his family moved him away, and um, uh, he made a statement and. This was this like almost brought me to tears. The, this statement he made, and it was, "When kids like me come up to the capital, we're not just fighting to play sports. We're not just fighting for affirmative healthcare. We are fighting for a right to live." And that's so, so heartbreaking. To and it speaks to what Cynthia was saying about having to drive out of state, and and there's so much going on that these people have got to deal with. Yeah, no, I, I think in reference to, because Charlie Apple um, in a previous uh, point and early this March was one of the people that testified uh, to go against this bill being moved forward. And another powerfully charged emotional statement they made um, after making their uh, testimony was, I didn't want to be there. I didn't want to testify. But who else is going to tell them, look me in the eyes and tell me you're not going to do this? I'm not hypothetical. I'm right here. Right. Yeah. yeah. And I, there's, there's an email for this show. If, if you meet this criteria that I'm about to lay out, email this show, because I'm sure everybody would want to see this. Where is the list of transgender athletes just dominating sports? Where is that? I spent 20 minutes looking. I spent 20 full minutes really hardcore looking at stuff. And we had our very first gold medal for uh, a transgender athlete in the Olympics this year as, sure a part, as a part of the Canadian women's soccer team. 
a mm. soccer team, guys. It's not as if it, it's not as if there was anything that th there's no way that that one individual, you know, made that much of a difference it, with mm -hmm. with 22 people on the field, for fuck's sake. Oh, are we far enough in? Can I say that? Yeah, yeah you good. You good. <laughs> well, for fuck's sake, if yeah. you've got the list, send it to send it to this show, because I want to see that list where women cisgender women after cisgender women is just being destroyed and dominated in their sports because i don't see it i don't see that's, it. that's a good point because every time that i saw articles that would actually talk about um transgender people in sports uh specifically transgender women competing in women's sports it's always this a photograph that they would utilize that is like the the extreme of mm -hmm. what a person looks like it's oftentimes mm -hmm. um and and please for, forgive me but i'm just you know being just descriptive here is that you know it's oftentimes a person who you know looks um uh built like um, a man with mm -hmm. long hair you mm -hmm. know You're and right. that's that's always you know the, the photograph that you know that's always floated around so oftentimes people who may not necessarily be um educated on this topic that's the first place that their mind goes uh, you know I, I work with transgender women um in my practice and m transgender women have a very huge variety of looks of build of you know some of them can be very tall some of them can be very short uh some of them uh as like some of them in the community are what they call they can pass you know as far as like you know if if you didn't know that they were undergoing treatment you would never know that they were born male you know and um and 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 I think that that's all those particular things that you can keep in mind because like as human beings we're not all built the same we don't all have the same capabilities uh, even when it comes to even a cisgender woman versus you know maybe a cisgender man you may have you know cisgender women who are extremely tall that's very built and you know compared to a cisgender man who is not you know so I, I, again none of these people are keeping any of this stuff in mind when when they're just like willy-nilly passing bills just because you know they they think that they're doing the right thing for uh for people who like to appeal to emotion like miss cassidy comer you know mm -hmm. and, and it's yeah. yeah okay i'm gonna shut up now no no you good it i love like it when you <laughs> <laughs> it does seem like the whole thing the whole thing's an appeal to emotion with the with the photographs they show and yeah. and the testimonies yeah. and things but the facts are that in Texas three percent of transgender k-12 students experience mistreatment including verbal threats and insults dress code violations for dressing as their gender identity and physical or sexual uh, assault according to the most recent U.S. transgender survey conducted in 2015. And the figures should speak for themselves. They should, they should override emotional language, emotional photographs, uh, trying to get people to vote on emotion rather than fact. Yeah. I have a question for you, Richard, since you're, you're one, of the, one of us here across the pond. Is there anything like this that you see in the schools in your surrounding area? Uh, mm -mm. I mean, th there's transphobia uh, in Britain, and uh, especially in towns where I'm from, which are kind of ex-steel, ex-mining towns, there's, mm. there's, there's still a remnant. It's getting better, but there's a remnant. I think in schools, it's not so bad. I think in schools, there's, there's more progress being made. But mm. uh, it, in, in general, in society general, in general, in Britain, a lot of work needs doing still, as within America. No, that's fair. And I, I want to reference a, an interesting point in the bill. This is definitely quite interesting, an uh, interesting amendment uh, in regards to female athletes. They, um, quote, allow to, um, they are, and I quote from the reference of this bill, are allowing to compete, allowing female athletes, I should say, to compete in male sports if they have a corresponding female sport that is not available and the interscholastic athletic team allows for it. So 
there's some discrepancy there. There's some yeah. unequal treatment, some bias, some discrimination, some unfairness. I don't know. Am I saying the right words? I think I am. Yeah. Why yeah. allow yeah. female athletes to go ahead and participate in male sports if it's not available and if they allow it? Right. But you're not allowing transgender women into the female sports because you think they were born male what the fuck <laughs> possibly dominate oh yeah, yeah. there's That's definitely definitely that underlying misogyny of oh well women just aren't as good or talented or strong or intelligent as men anyway so if a woman wants to go and play with the boys that's fine <laughs> play but, with the big boys yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh how cute look she thinks she can play that's right oh that's look right. at you that's right. <laughs> Damn, you gone girl <laughs> With nails. Okay. Anyway, right. <laughs> by all means, look into this deeper, folks. Um, this bill, I, I, like I said, it it has been passed, unfortunately, and changes have been made in the state of Texas. And I think also you had reference in um, your notes to secular, uh, secular regularity that even in your hometown, there's a similar bill already enacted. So yes. obviously, Texas is behind the times, but still, yes. this is idiotic. Um, well, what is Tennessee it with Texas? Beach, it's with Texas. You should. Well, I, I don't understand <laughs> what it is with Texas because if they're not, if they're not trying to discriminate against transgender people, they're trying to get creationism taught in schools. It just seems like it's a it's a Texas thing. Oh, oh yeah, That's or even much. like, um, uh, well, Texas is doing all types of weird shit. Uh, <laughs> we even had the whole issue with um, uh, them passing. So, like the Texas Congress past that it was okay to teach critical race theory you know or like or basically what i like to call it history in school mm -hmm. <laughs> however by the time they got to the senate okay you see a theme here that whole particular portion was completely gutted you couldn't you couldn't talk yeah. about frederick Douglass. you couldn't talk mm -hmm. about sojourner truth you couldn't mm -hmm. talk about a uh, susan b anthony you could i mean like so so what form of history did you want to teach texas senate you know and 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 <sighs> texas senate is a problem I, I'm, I'm just going, I'm, I'm just putting it out there. The Texas mm -hmm. Senate is a problem because it seems like that, especially in this particular body uh, of uh, uh, lawmakers, they always come up with the craziest, weird, dumbass shit in the world ever. Yeah. 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 Texas Senate is a problem. State yeah. Senate similar like this, like Texas that are doing this or have done it is a problem overall. Mm -hmm. And so by all means, if we can act and move to get this ripped out, however politics works, I don't know how politics works, but however it means we can just remove this and turn this shit around, it, the harm that is induced on putting down uh, an already marginalized group. I mean, what more can be said? So please, by all means, everyone look into this more, read about it. We have provided those resources for you down below. I need a break. Y'all need a break. I need a break. That was heavy. Uh, it was. Let's take a break. But, I'm but, I, but before you do, Jenna, and I, and I, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm exacting my host privilege. Oh, Politics okay. work by people caring and actually writing to their Congress people and actually saying that this is something that they care about and this bill mm -hmm. is wrong. Yep. And if you want to change, that's what you do. You engage your lawmakers, you engage your representatives. Hell, you voted for them. You can get mm -hmm. rid of them. So mm -hmm. that's how politics works. Mm -hmm. Okay, now. Amen. <laughs> On that note, <laughs> let's take a breather. Folks, here is something, uh, a little tidbit of last week's show. Here's something you, you've you missed. Check it out. My co-host tonight is the only person I know who watches more hockey than porn. Welcome, Puck. Well, it's the off-season right now, so uh, the, the ratio is a little bit different. At that point, I realized I had my first best argument against intelligent design in the human body because once you start talking about men's testicles people pay attention step in the right direction with step 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 in the right direction 
right. Yeah, well, if I can even get the layman terms for uh, crab and a lobster, let alone, like, you know, anything Layman else. terms for crab is a pinchy boy. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not kill. Honor thy father and mother. Boom, boom, boom. Got it all done. And the world is far too complicated for, for anything like that to ever be possible. Oh, I know I'm a woman. How do I know I'm a woman? What properties do I have mentally that make me a woman? A vagina. Oh, I have a mental vagina? I have a mental vagina, Javier. Can you see my vagina? Do you know if I have a vagina? I am, stop talking. <sighs> a mental vagina. <laughs> Damn, I'm oh cute. my gosh, that's a cute. Yes, girl. Yes, yes girl. Yes, girl. <laughs> I did. I did recognize a familiar face in there. Beautiful pipes, Cynthia McDonald. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you for Thanks. gracing us with that. It is written in your contract, so it, it is. is expected. But <laughs> Shannon took the cake for me. She did. <laughs> that was good. Um. All right. Well. Good. We got some laughs out. We got a breather. Let's dive on into our next topic. Secular rarity. Please introduce us. Yeah. So uh, there's there's two articles um, and they're both talking about uh, a really cool study. Um, one of the articles comes to us from him at Meta. Uh, he's a pretty friendly atheist if you don't know him. Um, but this this research study uh, and this paper was published about perceived changes in bias against LGBT individuals and Christians over time. And this, this paper really just focused on, on Christians. It, it didn't really talk about um, any of the other major religions or anything, but I, I, I would probably say this will ring true for a couple of those other ones as well. And it is important to, to know that this is perceived biased uh, by the individuals participating and, and not necessarily any actual found bias or anything but what this paper really shows is that there seems to be a group of christians for sure uh, not all of them but definitely a, a good a good chunk of them out there that have this zero sum contest in their head when it comes to it, you know advances in lgbt rights and them having their Christian belief. Um, so just basically the kind of whole you win, I lose type thing. Um, and again, this is perceived bias, not necessarily what you know matches up to reality, but I'll give you a hint, it's not. Um, mm. So I'm, I'm kind of split on this and, and I'll start off by giving my kind of calmer, nicer side. And then, and then I think I might end it by getting a little hot because it got me a little hot when I was reading it. So one of the things that that was really interesting about this paper and in the second article, it even ends this way where it says, quote, we hope that Christians, both lay and clergy, as well as the broader public, will learn about our research and consider the ways in which religious values can be harnessed for acceptance and equal treatment. Um, and I and I think that's awesome because one of the cool things that this paper does show us is that by priming Christians with those, you know, love thy neighbor type verses uh, before asking them these questions, they were a little bit, you know, less likely to, to pick these explicit statements that pit uh, advances in LGBT rights and, and Christian bias and so forth. They, they, they didn't pick those ones as much, which is which is really great. And I, I do value what they said in the fact of, look, every believer out there that doesn't agree that uh, homosexuals getting married just destroys Christianity or something, like somehow they're coming to attack you. I don't know why. I mean, they... They didn't invite you to the wedding. Maybe these people are still like upset about that. They're just not over it. I, I, I don't know. I, I mean, and I get it. I get it. They're fun weddings. I'm not. They you know, are. They are. The, the problem, the problem with that, and this is this is where I think I'm going to start getting a little hot. So, 
We already fucking know that if you cherry pick the Bible, you can make it say whatever you want. Hell yeah. So, I mean, great. Great that we figured that out once again. I'm, I'm, I'm happy about that. Um, and I'm, I'm happy that we're, we're getting that, that information out there that says, Hey, look, there is this persecution complex that exists for a lot of people in this group, because I think, you know, friendlier people, people that won't get as hot as I will in, in, in just a second, they, they can utilize that to make bigger changes potentially. And I think that's great, but here's the switch. You aren't being fucking persecuted, Christians. I don't know of a single news article of groups of, of atheists or, or groups of any other type out there beating up or demonizing Christians in this country. In other countries, that's a different story, but not here. Not here where these people were, were interviewed, where these respondents came from. Uh, there, there are whole nonprofit organizations that specifically focus on passing bills in state legislatures, demonizing people in the LGBT communities. And that just isn't the case for you, Christians. Like, calm down, take a drink of water. You're going to be fine because you always have been in this country. You're not, you're not losing anything. We're just simply saying, oh, hey, man, you don't get to tell people they don't get to play just because your God said so. And I'm happy with that. Like, hell yeah. Let's, let's, you know, part of me, when I read this, I was like, you know what? Fuck them. Feel persecuted. I don't care. Like, <laughs> get all, get all upset about it. If you want, you, you can go stand on your pulpit and you can yell and cry and do whatever you want to do. Break an extra loaf of bread. I don't, it's just, Come on, y'all. Who said an extra loaf of bread? An extra. Not just I would, I would, I would, fingers, I would. <laughs> How do word. we follow that? I, I think I think we need some British civility. Just we to do. follow that a little bit. Please. Yes. Uh, yes. I, di I dived into the actual article and, and talking about the persecution complex, that's backed up by the figures. The article, I think, it, I think they did five different studies over a three-year period, if I remember rightly. And the article states that sexual minorities face disproportionate violence and discrimination in approximately 20% of all eight crimes uh, towards uh, sexual minorities, whereas Christians suffering hate crimes make up less than 2% of all incidents, and only 9% of specifically religious hate crimes are aimed at Christians. So that, that just shows the level of this, this kind of complex that they've got going off. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I, now, a little, a little antidote for you wonderful people. I, I remember when I was a practicing Christian that oftentimes this whole idea of the persecuted for your beliefs was... Mm oftentimes espouse uh, not only just over the pulpit, uh, but also in a lot of like uh, evangelical televangelist tele mm -hmm. tele yeah. Certainly. Tele television, you, you know, televangelist, I'm televangelist. Yeah. yeah. This whole thing about um, uh, possibly suffering for your faith, suffering for your belief and 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 then it gets conflated in um, the ways that it would show up is if you happen to see like say for say for instance same sex marriage getting passed, that is the showing of the denigration of society and the possible coming of Jesus to judge the living and the dead and who knows what else might happen if we continue to let these particular bills and laws pass that could perceivingly be something that would actually uh, 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 keep us the Christian chosen people down in this country that that's oftentimes what's constantly fed into you know right. into the minds of people who are happen to think this way and and i think that it's very important that we even look when we looked at the article and also looked at the study that you know the word that that really stuck out is perceived 
Mm-hmm. These right. are perceived notions. These are perceived thoughts. These are perceived things to the point where your perception colors how you would look at a person who may not necessarily live like you, you know, mm. and, and and this is not the first time that we saw things like this, you know, uh, I, I, I referenced um, uh, in 1961, Dr. King was invited to speak at the Southern Baptist Theological Seminary School. But even people within that uh, denomination were not happy about him coming to speak, even though that he was a Southern Baptist preacher. The reason why they weren't is because oftentimes the Southern Baptist Convention was very much so known for racist and biased notions against African Americans. Right. Mm-hmm. So even though that, you know, you mentioned secular rarity, this whole thing about love thy neighbor, and you also mentioned about also being able to cherry pick what that means, depending on you know where you're reading and your interpretation of the Bible. This is something that you know has come up anytime that we are looking at another group of people and we want to other them. Yes. Right. That's that classic categorization of the lesser. And as you said, as we've basically been saying. Perceived bias, not <laughs> nowhere near in reality, nowhere near it. And so I question this and I'm going to ask obvious questions because, I mean, it's just obvious. Why do you feel this is the case in this moment? Why do you feel Christians are feeling that that pressure, that perceived pressure and heat from, you know, there being more out uh, gay people are more privileges for trans trans individuals. And I, I actually, and now that I'm, I'm speaking on this, this actually occurred for me and I had a conversation or listened to a conversation between my sister and my mother the other day, because within my organization, I found out and I can understand how this could be perceived as something unfair. So there is a policy in which, obviously, when you are newly married as an employee of that set of organization, uh, you must provide proof of um, marriage license in order for that spouse to receive health care under your same plan. So they receive all the same benefits, co-pays, all that stuff. Um, come to find out that there's a policy for those that are LGBTQ that distinguish and um, on their contract with HR that they have a partner. So they don't have to show proof of any type of legal binding between said partners. They can go ahead and receive those benefits. Now, Hmm. I can hear the um, obvious complaints around that. I mean, I heard it from my mother and my sister. And and for myself, I have mixed feelings on it because, you know, obviously with the heterosexual um, couple, they have to go that extra step of showing actual proof of, you know, license of marriage and things like that. But same sex couple partners, individuals do not. So I can see their perceived bias and hurt when it comes to Christians as, oh, they're receiving more and I'm having to be set down and have to go through these extra steps while they just get everything for free. But think yeah. about it's that. It's perceived again. It's perceived, though, isn't it? Yes. It's, and yeah. and the, yes. Artic, the article goes into that when it states that uh, it's important to note that although there have been significant social gains for sexual minorities, these don't likely correspond to increasing bias against Christians. So it's right. not all about the perception. And right. something you said, Jenna, I, I don't remember the exact word you used, but you said that why do you think it's... Uh, Christians have this, uh, these the ideas. Sense, yeah. The sense, yeah. yeah. Uh, I think it's just an ongoing thing, as, as uh, Cynthia pointed out. In the 1960s, 60s, there was prejudice against black people. And it's the latest in the long lines of uh, this persecution complex they've got. They feel, I think they feel that they've got to be rallying against something which gives them uh, uh, meaning, that gives them purpose. And I and I think one thing that's worth worth remembering when when reading this article, which 
Um, please, everybody watching, I mean, go go read this. It's 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 very easy to digest. It's a great article. Just just read through it and and you know see where you come out on it. And mm -hmm. again, this is I'm 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 more chilled, but I'm still a little simmering. Okay, so I'm, I'm I just gotta say, which is this is another reminder that these institutions and these ideas have consistently and repeatedly been against progress for humans. Right. Consistently over humans. and over again. Right. right. Because whether it's whether it's whether it's black humans, whether it's trans humans, atheist human, it doesn't matter. They they have continually decided to hold the leash and pull us back as far as we can and and they they just aren't going to let go. That's what it seems like. Um, right. I would love to know if if they, you know, maybe do a follow up or something where, you know, potentially if we could show some of these people um, that think the bias is is such so much greater now for Christians. If we could maybe show them articles or maybe statistics that disagree with that, if they'd be interested in changing their mind. I, I think that would be awesome. But again, somebody more calm than myself would probably have to do that. Yeah. The, the article does Come state on, that, like um, <laughs> the, the article does state that it's uh, the work is uh, is kind of a stepping stone uh -huh. to further articles. And uh -huh. I think that that's brilliant. And we need to continue to fund studies which I like prejudice. We need to get th people thinking about prejudice and why they are party to it. And co whether that's conscious or otherwise, and let's put it in the face so they have to acknowledge it. Let's normalize LBGQT plus rights across the board. And let's show that equity is normal and the differences between people aren't strange or unnatural, but part of the rich tapestry that makes us a beautiful human race. Because that's what we are. Absolutely. I mean, is it such a considerable problem for marginalized groups in general to not be represented? Is that it's, it's such an issue because society has changed. We're growing, we're different, especially here in America. Are we not considered a melting pot? Are we not? So what is the harm in having, you know, as I, I mean, I couldn't put it in better words, what Suckler really just said, humans just no. be, represented and give that significant significance to, you know, represent what the population looks like. Yeah. Do we have to just stay all white Christian for the rest of time? I hope not. Yeah. I hope not. Well, <laughs> white male Christians. I haven't grown a piece. I left that part out. Thank you. Correction. <laughs> Noted. <laughs> I mean, I, the ignorance um, in their, impression of their perceived harm and it's just ugly and it's yeah. old school and it's tired and it's boring yeah. and it's just to say the absolute least to be honest but i feel it certainly is falling on deaf ears quickly um and we're and it, one interesting thing that i will note from the article that referenced uh, <laughs> something that jeff sessions great american um said um and i quote in one of the supporting articles he said Effort to secularize the country by force and intimidation is somehow harming the Christian faith, and quite frankly, sad. Yeah, and that's quite frankly, that. it's sad. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that's what he said. I've mm -hmm. never, I've never forced anybody to secularize. Funny enough, I don't, I don't tend to spend my days standing on street corners yelling at people, "Take God out of religion." I mean, maybe I should. Maybe that's the problem, you know, yeah, but uh, yeah. no, I just, I just vote for the uh, non assholes. It's a pretty yeah, easy, pretty yeah. easy thing. That's kind of my, my route, you know, Hey, you want policies that actually make, you know, life better for human beings all over. Okay, sure. You get my vote. Yeah. Uh, if you, if, if you don't no, I'm not voting for you. And, and, <laughs> and, and I think that one of the things that is very, um, appropriate to mention as you just brought up secular rarity is that no one who has a um not that i've seen that has a more secular mindset is um proselytizing atheism 
you know, I, I've seen some of our friends on social media, maybe, you know, uh, like, you know, Anthony um, Magna Bosco, who actually engages people in street epistemology, or even uh, and some others who kind of took up that mantle to actually have conversations. But it's never to the point where, you know, uh, we're saying to any person that, you know, what you believe is bad, even though sometimes depending on what that belief is, it could be, but it's more so to say that, listen, you're not the only people that are, are that are in this world. You know, there's people who are different, who believe differently and, and live differently than you. And if that's the case, that's not necessarily a bad thing. You know, it, it's, it's people who want to be able to live their lives without impediment, from any person. And, and, and I don't, and, and that's why, again, this percep, this perception that's um, being possessed uh, by, you know, the certain group is, is, is very problematic uh, because like, very. What, it's because it's going to drive things like Texas's bills, you know? For, uh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's going to drive, you know, a possible, you know, uh, stepping backwards into, you know, some of the, um, the gains that LGBTQ people actually have made. And I, I mean, like we even seen how, um, uh, progress that came from, you know, bills, uh, from the past, like, uh, specifically the Voters Rights Act of 1965 get completely gutted in yeah. 2013 mm -hmm. by the Supreme Court when the, um, when the protections expired after 25 years. And then you had states responding to restrict, uh, uh voters' rights and abilities and accesses to doing all these particular things in order for a certain group of people to remain in power and to be overarchingly oppressive uh, to already marginalized groups, because that's what it always boils down to. You that know? It often does. It often yeah. does. And I'm, I'm going to wrap. I, I know this is, I can talk about this. We can talk about this, but I'll, I'll wrap us in this and, and on this note, it there, when faith wants to cry owie, because they keep picking at this scab on their elbow and wonder why it keeps hurting. Uh, they're doing it to themselves point blank. They're doing it to themselves by crying, ow, I'm hurt. Help me. This is unfair. You're doing it to yourself. You are deliberately pushing people outside of your faith, which for the most part, for a long time, a lot of LGBTQ individuals more or less still held on the Christian faith or any other faith there have you. But slowly but surely, a lot of them are coming out. Why? Because of this, because they realize the treatment that is being applied to them. And we can, you know, color this for everything, especially for atheism, normalizing atheism, making it a point and the purpose of making it more known and accepted. That acknowledgement needs to be there. We are humans and we deserve to be recognized and heard, minus the ugly. And I had this very conversation with people in the Discord server recently after on the very idea of the topic of Black atheism, normalizing the idea of Black atheists coming out of religion and realizing the differences in those subgroups within our community. And so this can be applied here, the differences and the acceptance and having individuals be their authentic selves is important. And it's the own fault for Christians picking at their own scab and hurting their own selves for this. But I digress. Thank you for my TED talk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on from this and we'll end it on a lighter note because this is an interesting, interesting story out of my own state. I, I, I had to actually kind of Google map and locate where this actual area is. But before I get to um, detailed, Richard, please, I know you're <laughs> more excited about this than I am. <laughs> Why is it I always get the comedy section at the end? <laughs> <laughs> you picked it, Richard, whatever. <laughs> I, I love this. <laughs> I do love this, and I think I, I love this because it is something that I would love to do myself if I had the opportunity to do well, it. You're the only one. I'm right. I'm an extended <laughs> chicken in English. Um, right, this story focuses on one Brent Underwood, who saw an opportunity, a $1.4 million opportunity, 
got a few dollars between friends and packed up his truck to go and live in a dusty old mining town. <laughs> in 2018, he and some business partners bought the 380-acre town with the idea of restoring it and its hotel as a tourist destination. So, you know, of course, no mining town should come without its fair share of mystery, intrigue, and adventure, which would make a jolly good film. And Cerro Gordo, <laughs> California, population, Brent, is no different. <laughs> it's got a past that would make its way into any Young Guns movie without even having to audition. And this is a useful perk when you've also got a YouTube channel with 1.21 million subscribers. I mean, crazy, right? Like to watch stuff, <laughs> yeah. It's amazing. Yes, by all means. Brent, um, he has his YouTube channel. We're going to put the link to his channel below so you can check it out. I've watched some of the videos. And like I said, I had a Google map where the heck this is in California. For me, it's like maybe an hour north from Bakersfield, if any of y'all know your geography or live in California for that matter, and more closer to the border of Nevada, just on the edges of Death Valley. And even with me like putting in to the search and I'm just like, it won't, it won't pop up. This place doesn't exist. I had to like dive into all other places to find this location. And I was like, okay, it's near Nevada, close to Deb Valley. That equals hot. No, thank you. I'm out. Yeah. Mm -mm, not for me. Yeah. <laughs> but I it's think... interesting. It's an interesting story how he landed there and <laughs> stays there. Well, I, I would just like to add that if I and some friends can come up with $1.4 million. It would definitely not be buying Sarah Gordo. It would not be that. <laughs> I, I mean, like, I don't know if you got it, how many of all of you all got a chance to really look at, like, some of the videos. I, I, wa I watched the, the pinned one uh, about, you know, him talking about coming to Sarah Gordo in the first place. And it right. doesn't, it, and, and I, I mean, like, I, I don't know how I completely feel about him trying to turn this whole thing into a, a tourist destination. It, I don't know if you got a chance to see. It's not very easy to get it's, there. No, it's uh, not. Uh, no. Isn't it cut off entirely in the winter as well? Yeah. 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 <laughs> let's, 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 no. I mean, I was wondering, like, how are you eating, sir? Um, how are you eating when it gets like wintry? I, I didn't even know that it actually got that wintry in that area. <laughs> that, yeah. Did you, did you all? I mean, like, I mean, no. like oftentimes you think of like California is like sunny and, you know, and, you know, beachy and, and fun. And that didn't look fun. It didn't. That ain't fun. It didn't, it did not look fun. And I was also wondering, like, you know, these dirt roads that he was coming up even in his truck he was like oh yeah it's just like this a little bit of sliver road that's between us and like the gorge and one fail swoop and then that's your life i like <laughs> yeah adventure huh yeah yeah and i i think one of my so i had two i had two favorite parts of the article what my the, the first one was where the reporter just asks him so do you know how to build stuff? Like not even a super technical question, no specifics about engineering or architecture, just do you build stuff, bro? And the, and the, and Brent responds and he's just like, nope, <laughs> kind of okay. figured it out. It's like, okay, well, I wish the guy the best of luck. I really do. I just, and maybe this is why I don't own a ranch out in Cerro Gordo. Um, I, I just, I would have thought maybe learn some building stuff skills if that's yeah. uh, maybe well, that's too technical maybe he th that's why he has contractors there and i you know i do feel for the poor lad i'm i'm concerned about his mental health i'm not calling him crazy but you know in one of the videos he referenced you know happened to see some strange things oh boy oh there is a surprise when he's trying to get tourists in <laughs> <laughs> I see. Okay. You know, really playing up that whole ghost town thing. You oh, know? Yeah. 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 Uh, uh, one of the, vi uh, one of the pin videos, if you get a chance to watch, he describes, um, there was one, I forgot specifically what type of house that he was referring to, uh, a coach house, I believe. And he said that, um, the light was off 
when he first was around it and then you know he left it but he when he came back like the light was on even though like the door was completely locked and then so he asked one of the contractors hey were you into the in the coach house doing work and it's like no we weren't around there and so he was like i'm not saying that you know it could be a thing oh, I'm just saying it could be a thing and i'm just like <laughs> i mean one fun aspect is that you know he's social distancing to the extreme, you know, because come on, bitch. Sure. <laughs> like sure. he got into the game and was like, something's coming. I'm moving out to who knows where. <laughs> you know? So that's a that's a fun maybe idea to think about it. But it's let me give you some history. <laughs> oh no, go for it, go for it before I do. <laughs> quickly, Ed, quickly. Do you think there's going to be a trend though that when when his plan works out and all these multitudes move in, he's going to move on to a little hut? in the middle of nowhere because there's too many people for him <laughs> oh like he keeps mm. going further and further away from civilization mm. like he mm. that's interesting hmm. yeah that's well, interesting. if he can get 1.4 million dollars from his friends in order for him to be able to do that sure why not yeah you don't have I that mean, line around right that, that, let me check my mattress yeah, let me get yeah. my mattress real quick i gotta check my savings account but if uh, that was the that was the case for me i would prefer to be more you know ocean viewed mm. tropical mm. with some ac just a little bit ac yeah but maybe that's just my bougie side but let me get some, let me give you some folks some history because <laughs> i know we've been joking about this so the premise behind all this is you know uh, this was a town that was uh, pretty well known back in the 1860s because of the discovery of silver so uh, this town called uh, Cerro Grotto in California is about 400 acres of land where it was a bustling town of hotels, businesses, small homes, small groups of families, things like that. Because of the discovery of silver, uh, obviously it was a mine mining town. And of course, all that dried out. And eventually by the 1930s, it was completely abandoned. And since then, there have been several of other people that have tried to purchase the land and try to make something of it, but obviously failed. And he, Brent Underwood, happens to be one of those newest um, people to purchase said land. Um, something occurred where it went bust again, but he's pretty much permanent residence. And I think even the article, it said, you know, he has nothing else to go back to. His family sold his childhood home. So he's right. just, you know, there. I'm like, well, damn. Right. Yep. You, you got <laughs> to make it work by hook or crook, sir. You got to make it work. You got to make it work. I wish the guy the best of luck. I really, really do. I just, I think maybe a little bit more planning might have been helpful. But again, like you, like, uh, like we've mentioned, I mean, he's, <laughs> he's got a pretty decent you know, following on YouTube and stuff. I mean, it's not like people don't know. He's got like volunteer sign up forms and stuff. Um, I will say though, my my second favorite part was where he was talking about searching the grounds for old items that he could put in his museum. Yeah. 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 <laughs> what he what he says is he says the number one thing you find out here is a Lee and Perrin's Worcestershire sauce bottle. And I I love that. And I think that's hilarious. And one of the reasons I think that's so funny is after this show, everybody go check if you have any other type of Worcestershire sauce than Lee and Parents because everything else is crap. It is it is it is watered down garbage, and you need you need to get on the right path. Okay, you don't need God. You need the right Worcestershire sauce. Amen. Worcestershire. I like the idea that he's got this this museum as well because if he's, he's, he's the only resident, it is literally is it literally a museum for one. Yeah. yeah. Why does he need a museum where everything's collected together? He could have just have it spread around and have a wander around. Because Brett needs something to do. He is in yes. a town of one. Yes. Yes. Okay, so yes. looking at things that he can find and putting them in uh, a, a place where he can admire them in his museum. Why the fuck not, Richard? <laughs> Brent, if you're watching this, please find civilization. We, we're worried about you. We miss you. We love you. But you need to come home. Okay? All right. Well, we're going to end it there. <laughs> I just... 
Uh, that was that was gold. Thank you. Oh my gosh, y'all are brilliant. This was fun. That was just you know we talked about heavy stuff, but we had fun at the same time. It was I enjoyed this. Thank you all. Secular Rarity, you need to come back. You I would need love to come to. back. I would love Enough to said. anytime. Thank you. By all means, YouTube viewers, thank you for tuning in this week. Join our social media outlets, okay? They're fan run. They are awesome. You can find most of us, the nonprofit hosts, on the Atheist community of Discord by going to tiny.cc slash ACA Discord and on Facebook at facebook.com slash group slash nonprofits live. If you would like to support the show, you can do so by coming, becoming a patron at patreon.com slash the nonprofits. Please do so. We're we're gathering members on the channel too, so that's great. I love to see those green those green um, uh, usernames on the side uh, side chat. So I see y'all. Thank you, thank you for your support. Um, if you find the time, and if you happen to be shopping on Amazon, also support the atheist community of Austin by shopping at smile.amazon.com and selecting the atheist community of Austin as the beneficiary. And be sure to use that link to help out the ACA. We so appreciate you. And of course, please, we love emails. Send us an email, write us a comment down below, however you want to get um, your information to us. We value that feedback. But by all means, tell us what you like and what you don't like in the comments or in the email at nonprofits at atheist-community.org. Thank you all panel. Love you. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Kisses. Thank you, YouTube land. Thank you, listeners on the AEM podcast. Until then, we will see you all next week. Watch The Atheist Experience live Sundays at 4.30 p.m. Central. Visit tiny.cc slash ytaxp and call into the show at 512-991-9242 or connect to the show online at tiny.cc slash callaxp.